So welcome to Mrs. Lawrence's project and as you can see mine is all about mountains. Now when I was researching the internet about what I wanted to do my project on I came across an interesting fact that 20% of the earth's surface is covered by mountains and that's something that I didn't really know or I don't really know much about mountains so I thought this was an ideal opportunity to find out a little bit more. So I started off my project by deciding that this would be a geography driver and I came up with some questions about what I actually wanted to know about mountains. So I started with where are the world's most famous mountains and mountain ranges? How are they formed? How do they actually get there? What's the climate like in those places? Why are they important? What's the impact of tourism on mountainous regions? And if there were any famous artists known for painting mountains? So when I decided what I wanted to know, I came and had a look at some of the skills that I could use in my project. So with it being a geography driver, most of these skills are geography based. There's also a little bit of maths in the wider curriculum and some art learning challenges on there. Once I had my skills sorted, I started to do my research. Now, as you can see, it's not very neat. It's all different fonts and different sizes, but this was just some getting together some basic ideas from different websites that I could use to help me in my project. And as you can see, I've got some different pictures there from different artists and some different images that I would like to use in my project. So the research stage and getting it all together and getting my ideas ready took um, about a day to get that sorted and get my ideas set in my head for what I wanted to do. Then I decided to do each piece of work and um, I presented it similar to how it might look in our topic books at school, but you do not have to do that. You can present it in any way that you want. So my first piece of work is a geography piece looking at where mountains in the world are and where they're located. So I've done some written work about what they are and where they're found. And this map has been printed off from Twinkle, but don't worry if you can't print anything off. That's absolutely fine. Then following on from that, how the mountains are formed. And I've done a combination of printing off diagrams from the internet and using drawing some of my own diagrams as well, whilst I've been um, explaining them in my own sentences. Looking at different types of mountains and looking at some, how these types of mountains are formed. My next piece of geography work was all about the climate, so how it fits into its wider geographical location with reference to its physical features. So I did a bit, bit of a written explanation about the climate of mountainous regions. And with that, I decided to do some maths in the wider curriculum by looking at a bar chart to show the average number of days of rainfall on the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. And once I'd done my bar chart, I came up with some questions, some comparison and difference questions to go with it and had to go answering them myself. The next piece was back to geography and this one was all about how the location fits into its wider geographical location with reference to human features. So again it's a written explanation but this time I've decided to go for a bit more of a poster look and um, done some drawings to go with it as well. Then I decided, so this story was all about the um, why mountains are important and what they're used for. Then I decided to go do some artwork and using one of the pictures that I found in my research stage, this one was my favourite, it was a painting but I've decided to go for a different style um, and had a go at doing it in a, as a pencil drawing and using colouring pencils to have a go at different colours. I really like the bold colours that he used so that's where I, I decided to do that piece of artwork and then I've written about what I've done up there. And finally, back to geography, I've had a look at the impact of tourism on mountainous regions and done a bit of a piece of writing about the positive and negative impacts of tourism and then what it might be like in the future. So I really hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to see some of the projects that you come up with too. So my topic is all about the seven wonders of the world based on the history. Because it's a history driver, what I wanted to look at is what it is, the historical dates and the historical events. After this, I started looking at my learning challenges. I've decided to do history learning challenges as it's my history driver. Again, I've got year five and six because of the year five, six class um, and link them together so that they're doing the same activities. Obviously, if you're in year five, you choose year five learning challenges. And if you're in year six, you can choose your year six learning challenges. 
So for year five, I've got, can you use dates and historical language in your work? Year six, can you place events on a timeline by decade? Year five, another history learning challenge. Can you describe historical events from different periods? And year six, can you summarize the main events from a specific period in history, explaining the order they happened? Then I wanted to do some art. So I have chosen, can you organize line, tone, shape, and color for year five? And can your sketches communicate emotion and sense of self accuracy? So for the art, I'm going to be doing a sketch of the Taj Mahal. And for the history, I will be doing information on the seven wonders in order of when they happened and a timeline. So this is my final project and I've decided to do it in a booklet slash portfolio form. It's based on all the seven wonders of the world and inside I've got my pieces of work that have linked back to the learning challenge that I spoke about earlier. Now, the seven wonders of the world, seven wonders of the world were narrowed down from 200 monuments from around the world and there are different types of wonders. For instance, the ancient wonders of the world and the modern wonders of the world. But these ones I've done are the new wonders of the world and they were discovered in 2007. And they were voted on from 200 monuments. So I've started with a timeline and my timeline outlines the dates of when each of these monuments were built and who built them or, and why they were built. That's the year six hill. Then I've moved on for each of the monuments and seven wonders of the world. I have done what they are, why they were built and when they were built. I've also looked at some history facts and some maths facts um, in there as well to link my maths into the wider curriculum. And I've got dates of when these facts were, were, are important and why. So I've done every wonder on each page. Colosseum is the only wonder that I've visited last summer. Now my favourite one, the one I've um, enjoyed learning about the most, was the Taj Mahal. Very, very interesting. It was built as a final resting place for the third wife of the, of the Muhal Emperor. And then Christ the Redeemer. So my final um, piece of work in my project, I wanted to do something creative, so I decided to do some artwork. And again, because my favourite one was the Taj Mahal, I have drawn the Taj Mahal using tone, line and shape. For the colour, I decided to do shade because I, I, I do prefer shading over using colours. But to do this, I, um, I drew lines to get it accurate because it was it's built symmetrically, so my piece of work had to be symmetrical. Um, and then hopefully this piece of work will uh, meet the learning challenges of being accurate and using my imagination, but also using line, tone, shape and colour. So that's my project. It is based on history, but obviously because it's the seven ones of the world, you could do a geography project as well. And I think that would probably be my next step. Right, so welcome to Miss MacDonald's project. I started by finding myself a lovely notebook. Don't worry if you don't have one of these, any piece of paper will do. Um, and I started by having a look at the skills that I might be interested in. Um, I thought about the geography skill of thinking about human features of different places, so man-made objects. Um, I quite like the idea of doing a bit of history and putting things in order on a timeline. Um, and I like the science, I do like my animals, so I thought about doing this animal one. Um, I then started by writing down some things that interest me. So I, I wanted to find out a bit more about Roald Dahl, maybe J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. I think he's quite interesting. Um, Hadrian's Wall is something that interests me, but I don't know very much about that. Um, and then otters are my favourite animals, so I thought I could maybe use that science skill um, to have a look at that. So I wrote down just a few ideas of different things that might interest me. Um, and I decided to go with Hadrian's Wall because I thought that could fit in both the geography skill of a human feature, because Hadrian's Wall is a man-made feature, and also some history thinking about when it was built. So my first step after I'd chosen those, that took me about half an hour to look at the skills, come up with some ideas, have a think about which one I might want to do. Uh, I then decided to write myself some questions about Hadrian's Wall. So I just sat down and just started with the basic questions. So for example, where was it built? So which country is it in? Whereabouts in that country? When was it built? So I thought I could maybe put that on a timeline. 
who built it and why, uh, who was ruling at the time, who was Hadrian, why is it called Hadrian's Wall, what actually is it, um, I thought I'd have a look and see if there were any stories about the wall or the life at the wall, um, a bit about the wall today and then I thought I could maybe do some art, maybe a sketch of the wall, um, maybe have a look at some songs or, or maybe write a song to go in with my literacy. So that's where I started. Um, so that was my first day, really, was just coming up with my questions. My next day, uh, the next couple of days, was thinking about some research. So here I've bullet pointed some of the answers to these questions. They're not in any particular order. It's just what I found when I had a look on the Internet, um, trying to use websites that were not Wikipedia, obviously, because we know that that's not a very, um, not a very reliable source. Um, as you can see, it's not very neat, just literally bullet pointing. I've got crossings out. That doesn't matter at all because that's just my basic thoughts. Um, the next day, I put those ideas into a bit more structure. So I've given myself some subheadings um, just to start thinking about how that information might go together. And it carries on onto this page here. So once I'd started, and once I'd done all my research and got some of the answers, I used a, a combination of textbooks. Um, that were lying around in my parents' house. I used the internet, um, so there's a couple of different things. I then used that and decided that I wanted to put it together as a poster. Um, now, the very first thing that I actually did was find a piece of artwork uh, that I quite liked that shows the wall. Um, this is where I started, so I printed out this piece of art, um, and then I've tried to copy it. So this was a whole afternoon's work, me trying to recreate this sketch. Uh, it turns out not too not too bad at the old art. Um, and then I gradually, over the next couple of days, have put it together um, to make a poster that looks like this. Uh, so I thought about how to set out an information poster. So I've got some subheadings. I've got an introduction up here. Um, I've got an interesting drawing, hopefully, across the top of Hadrian's Wall. I printed out a couple of pictures. Um, and I have put it together like that. So what I would then do is take a nice big picture, maybe some pictures of close-up bits so that my teachers can share the information that I've gathered. I've got some subheadings that go with um, some uh, captions even to go with each picture um, and a little timeline there that ticks off my history skill um, and the geography skill, obviously all about a human feature, which is the wall itself. So all that information ticks off that geography skill. So pretty pleased, uh, ready to move on to my next two week topic, which I'll probably do otters. I hope this has sparked some interest and started you thinking about some of your own ideas. Remember, each project should take two weeks to put together, so please don't rush. Make sure you're using a variety of subjects. Perhaps you could write a song or a rap, do painting, create a model to go with the information you find out. The list is endless. Anyway, good luck. We can't wait to see what you've produced next Friday.